going on guys? Um, today I have a video with a review on the APRS uh, BTEC cable. Um, it's the BTEC V2 uh, and it is used to cr connect your Baofeng radio to a um, pretty much a audio TNC pretty much any of them um, and you'll be able to transmit and receive APRS messages with the cable which is an audio interface to um, use APRS on your bow thing and um, I've used it probably months now and the funny thing is I had an APRS digipeter with a Raspberry Pi and I actually used this this cable uh, to transmit with and um, it worked really well and I'm just gonna talk to you guys about what it does, what it looks like, and all that good stuff. So, this is the cable itself. Uh, this cable, uh, this end here, plugs into your uh, Baofeng radio, uh, and it's pretty much any model that has the standard jack plug, just like this. So, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, and I'm using my Baofeng radio F8HP with the uh, extended AA battery case. So that's the reason it's so long. The next part on the cable is going to be this this little nifty thing here. This is what makes the cable um, pretty much worth anything. It's it's got a resistor in it that regulates it, like it's a circuit board that regulates the audio. Um, that goes back and forth between the radio and the uh, the interface in order to make sure there's not too much voltage going across the wire. It's not too loud. It's not too soft. So it it does all those things for you. Uh, and that's really neat. That's what makes this cable special. And the end of the cable is this your uh, I think 3.5 millimeter jack audio cable. And you'll want to plug this in to the uh, interface that you're using to decode and transmit the, um, the APRS messages. So today I'm going to be using my cell phone to do that uh, with an app called APRS Droid. The link will be in the description. And uh, I'm just going to have a showcase here also. I have a FTM 100 that I'm going to be using for the other end to uh, send and receive messages. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and take my radio and we're going to go in and put it on the APRS frequency. So I already have the channel programmed in, uh, I think it's 140... Uh, 144.390 and the next thing I'm going to do is since I'm using the audio cable I need to turn on the um, the Vox on my radio so we're going to put the Vox at 1 uh, we might have to put it up a little while but uh, we'll test it out and see see what it, uh, if it works right so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cell phone and I'm going to open up the APRS droid app um, that I have on my cell phone here as you can see actually we'll just record so on the APRS droid app um, so on the APRS Droid app, I'm going to go ahead and open up um, APRS Droid. And I'm just going to clear my log, and I'm going to go to my preferences. And um, right now, I have my uh, my path set up for APRS digipeating. That's fine. The next thing I'm going to do is go to my connection preferences and make sure that we're using the um, AFSK um protocol which is pretty much audio interface with the APRS droid app and since we're using the bow thing I am gonna set my prefix time up a little high to make sure it opens the radio squelch and we are heard so really uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, change your comment if you want to I am I was just doing some work with APRS with the ISS so I'm gonna change that to um, uh, testing and once we have that uh, and we are on our APRS droid screen, we are uh, ready to transmit. What we'll do is hit start tracking and then send position and uh, we'll be able to get messages back and forth. Now, fortunately, I can't do that um, while I'm recording the screen on my phone, so I'm going to stop that. 
it's on the APRS. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my audio cable into my phone. And uh, we now have our audio interface between the radio and the phone. I'm going to turn my radio up about three-fourths of the way in the volume. The chip should regulate any type of issue we might have, but uh, just in case. And I also have my um, my FTM100 on the APRS frequency as well. And what we'll do is go ahead and hit start tracking. So once we start tracking, it's going to start measuring the output level from the radio uh, and scan for any APRS beacons. Uh, it's kind of quiet around this area, so what I'm going to do is just take my FTM100 here and transmit a message. And once I hit this button here, it should pop up and it will be my FTM100 popping up. So as you can see, there's my call sign. Uh, that was the FTM100. It just um, just sent a message or an APRS ping. So that's pretty neat. And the next thing I'm going to do is this. Uh, I'm actually going to send my position. Ping it. There we go, to the radio. And um, I can actually even send a message to myself. Not the best recording conditions. And I don't even know if you can see the screen. But I'm going to go ahead and send a message to myself. And as you can see, the radio disinterpreted it. Uh, and it, it's got itself on my cell phone map here. But uh, that's pretty much how this works. Um, it's a neat little cable. Uh, it's very, very handy. And um, if you're into APRS, if you're into APRS, um, it's a neat, cheap setup that you can do uh, to get in some type of APRS tracker. If you get one of these cell phones and you get a, um, you know, a cheaper one with a GPS, you don't have to be connected to a network for it to work. Everything is done in the app offline. So uh, this is a neat little setup, and it does what it's supposed to do. And if you guys, you know, if you like this video, if you want to see a different review or uh, some different example, just let me know in the description. And as always, subscribe and uh, comment.